Hey there! In this video I'll show you my top 5 favorite ways of breaking the Unity game engine. A game engine is a program meant for making video games. What a lot of people don't know is that they are also extremely fun to just mess around with, expect to see some mind-bending glitches and perhaps you'll even learn a thing or two about how rendering in video games actually works. Number 5 the first way of breaking your game engine is actually super simple. Disable screen clearing. You won't believe how easy this is to do in Unity. You just select your camera and then you select don't clear. Every camera in a game engine usually has one canvas it can draw on and whenever it renders a new frame it just draws on top of whatever was there before. Meaning if you don't draw any backgrounds it actually looks like this. Here we have a relatively basic looking particle system, screen clearing disabled and it looks entirely different. Holy Jesus mother of this looks so incredibly normal. Okay, that was already cool but you won't believe what happens when we use post processing in combination with this. Post processing is basically when you apply effects to the image after it has finished rendering. In this case I added a little bit of colored blurriness at the edges here. Let's disable screen clear in 3, 2, 1. When we look at it frame by frame it's fairly obvious to see why and how this happens. It's applying the effect to the same image over and over again, which just happens to look pretty damn cool. Number 4 is a quick one, but also a fun one. Write a script that turns everything into a rigid body. And when I say everything... I mean everything. For everybody who doesn't know what a rigid body is, in Unity that's a physically simulated object. So for example if you drop it, it falls. Loop de loop through all objects, add a rigid body, profit. I was also really wondering where she went. Half a minute later this happened. Don't worry, no women were hurt. The field of view in a video game determines how much the camera can see at once. In Unity you have full control over this number. So you can pretty much make the vision cone as big or as small as you want. <coughs> you see where this is going. Most video games limit this decision to the reasonable range between 60 and maybe 90 degree. I however think that 160 is actually the perfect value. See? Absolutely flawless. Let's see if we can see the entire lake when we look down. And heck yeah we can, hell yeah baby. When we're in the middle of the map we can actually see the entire map when looking downwards. Here it looks like the clouds are moving but in fact nothing's moving at all. I'm just tilting the camera. You might be wondering what happens if we go for an even higher field of view. Here you go, at this point you unfortunately stop seeing anything so yeah, you know, yeah. <laughs> This gives me some serious drone flying vibes for some reason, so I just had to give it third place. Now that we already feel a little dizzy inside, number two is definitely not gonna help. I don't think you can figure out what's going on here, so let me just tell you. We have two cameras this time that are looking in slightly different directions, but they are both rendering onto the same image. What really surprised me about this is that the two images are overlapping with each other. I expected it to be one in front of the other, but instead they have kind of merged into one. The explanation for this phenomenon is of course the set buffer. Because video games don't just store the red, green, blue values of every pixel, they also store the depth value of every pixel. Or in other words, for everything the game renders, it stores how far it is from 
the camera. That way whenever the game has to render a new object, it automatically knows if it has to draw it on top or behind what's already there. So I think this is exactly what's happening with our two cameras as well. Whatever is closest to the camera ends up winning out. If you want to reproduce this in Unity, just set the depth of one camera to one with disabled screen clearing. The second camera can stay at the default settings and you will get this beautifully messy effect. Where it starts getting really crazy is when your cameras point in opposite directions. Believe it or not, but those two trees are actually the same tree. We're just seeing it from two different directions at once, which is super confusing. go to the number one spot I have one honorable mention I want to show you and that would be turning all objects inside out. In order to improve performance games usually only render one side of each surface. So if you flip all surfaces around this is basically how it looks like. The transparent side is now on the outside and the solid side is on the inside. It looks kind of cool in some cases but you know there's not that much more to see. Okay I can't resist this girl looks kind of hollow. <laughs> Number one is actually insane. This is getting way crazier than it seems at first, okay, so stick with me. It all began when Mr. Wilson finally got his new flat screen. Poor Mr. Wilson was very confused by what he saw. Little did he know that what he was actually looking at was a Unity render texture. He didn't know how easy it was to create one or that you could simply drag it onto your camera to set it as a render target. He didn't even know that render textures could be applied to materials to create the very screen he was looking at. Or if you want the idiot explanation, his screen is showing what your screen is showing. We can create these screens in all shapes and sizes of course and the moment we start tilting the camera it starts to get very very interesting. You don't even need to use a flat surface as a screen. You can also use a ball if you want. I also had to make a very big screen of course which later on gave me an even better idea. This right here is a giant screen that moves with the camera. Also quite cool. This is the screen in case you didn't see it. It's a bit confusing. When we make the screen bigger it gets even weirder. And there's still so much more you can do. See if you can figure this one out, for example. I'll give you a little tip. It's using two cameras and obviously it's also using render textures. Little coding challenge for all of the Unity nerds among you. Try to reproduce this if you dare. I present to you my biggest invention yet. The Jonas Box. A Jonas Box has screens on every side. Exhibit B, ladies and gentlemen! Enter if you dare! <laughs> Here comes the best of them all, Exhibit 3. This time there are just a couple of colored blocks inside and it looks absolutely insane. And last but not least, to close the circle of this video. Thanks for watching and go binge watch my other videos now. Yay! Let's go!